Hi, this is going to be video number three of the Reverse Engineering with Geomagic Design X uh, little video tutorial series. And we are going to cover uh, extrusion, um, some patterning, and Boolean as well to make a simple, um, not completely 2D, but uh, close part. So I'm going to use, uh, it's a flame cut ID sprocket, so it's a pretty rough part. Um, you'll see here that its uh, units are inches, so I know the STL has data in it that is, uh, was exported as inches. So I'm going to use the custom uh, uh, settings on the import tab and change the units to inches. Now when it comes in, I should get uh, no warnings, so everything seems to make sense. I have some uh, data out here in space. So what I can do is use the Everything Connected the Flood Fill Selection Tool, followed by Shift-I or right-click Invert, and then right Delete to get rid of that extra data. All right, uh, from here we need to do a quick alignment. So we're going to create a plane on top. We're going to use our uh, uh, Smart Selection Tool. And this is where we can click. And if we drag up or drag down, it increases or decreases the selection based on uh, surface curvature. Uh, hit accept. From there, as we did in the previous videos, we're going to go and use a mesh sketch to get the additional geometry that we need uh, for alignment. And uh, you know, the vast majority of the time, that's the, the method that we're going to use when we're reverse engineering with Geomagic Designix. So I'm going to hide my mesh. And I want to use the, uh, I'm going to use this circle. I, I really could pick any of them. I know the outside of this part doesn't actually do anything. Uh, so I'm going to ignore the outer uh, circumference. And I am going to pick this hole over here. Uh, from here, I just need a line between them. So I can have an origin position in the middle and use this as one of my axes. I'm going to exit. Then I'm going to use the interactive alignment tool. And um, 3, 2, 1 method's fine because uh, I have a plane, uh, a vector, and a point. So plane is going to be the plane that I fit to the face. The vector is going to be that construction line. And uh, you'll see here that uh, one degree of freedom left means that there's only one sliding direction. So I like to pull it off, click the find for the position. And if we don't like the direction, you can see here the Z is into the uh, part. We can just flip that here. So I'm going to accept that. And if I go front view, everything here with the mesh looks good. I just need to get rid of the um, sketch in the plane. All right, so now we have everything aligned and ready to go. Um, we're going to uh, unfortunately repeat a little bit of what we did here with another mesh sketch, basically exactly the same. And I'm going to start uh, 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 drawing over this geometry. Now what I want to do is I want to do the outer profile, uh, the hole on the right, and the innermost center hole, but not the tooth profiles. So we'll double click here, double click here, start with that. Now we want to do CAD correction here. So if we look close, you'll see that we have a little deviation between uh, the center of that outer circle and the origin. That's OK. We're going to pull it until we get the little snap indicator. The diameter won't change, but the position will. So now, just so things don't change on me, I'm going to lock the diameter. I'm going to do the same thing here. Lock the diameter. We can change that later. The purpose of locking is so that it doesn't do something that we don't intend it to do when we move it or, or, or apply a constraint. Um, put a construction line between the two, right click it, and put a horizontal constraint. Uh, now, if I want to do a final, I just add a dimension here. And now everything so far is fully constrained. So now I'm going to put another circle out here. But if we look close here, we see that we're not even close to concentric. So I'm going to pull that just the same. But once I do that, you'll see here that we're not close enough. Uh, that's OK. I'll just override it by pulling. Now, this shape isn't perfect now, uh, but we I am going to force this as the intent. Um, so I'll lock the diameter. And, and we can, you know, if I want this to be 3 inches, I'll just force it to be 3. Now. For the straight line here, there's a couple ways we can do this. Um, we can double click. 
Uh, what I don't like about that is these look like they're connected, but they're not. Um, this is also not tangential, so we'd have to add these constraints, and it's a little bit difficult when these nodes are so close to the edge. So I'm going to undo that. What you can do, instead of double-clicking it, you can just box select. And it's a shorter line, but that's fine. So now, if we double-click the line, and then control, click another entity, we get relative constraints. And I want that to be tangential. I double-click the line again. Hold control or shift and click the, the second entity. And then I have tangential again. So now we force this to be tangential to these two. So now we can use this extend tool and extend in both directions. We can do the same thing. Now another thing we can do here is we can click roughly where we see this node. So instead of fitting, we're going to click. And you see right away we get perpendicular and tangential guides. So now we've created, now we can drag this till it's connected. And then the only thing we need to do is do a double click and then control click second one and add a constraint. So both of those are, are, are pretty quick and pretty good. Um, then we hit our trim tool and power trim is the one we're going to want. So anything we click goes away. There we go. Now the only thing we need is the center here. Now, we don't know its exact size. So what we can do if we want to average out deviations is we can go to every other one, just use the box select to capture just a small amount of what we think should be coincident with this bore. Then we can lock its diameter first. So 8.65. Then we're going to have to look way in here, but we'll see that it's always slightly off center and just drag it. And now everything is fully constrained because it's black. Now we exit the sketch. I'm going to show my mesh. I'm going to use the extrude command from the home tab. It's obviously going in the wrong direction. I'm going to flip it, but I can eyeball it here and see that it's pretty close to point uh, 2.625. So I'm just going to go with that. There we go, we have uh, a solid created. So now really all we have to do is rem uh, remove these teeth uh, and these holes as well. So we're gonna repeat another mesh sketch and just pull a little bit down. I like to keep one sketch per feature. So um, I'm not gonna do both the tooth profile and the holes in one. I also like to stay away from sketch patterns. Um, they don't transfer very well when we get to the live transfer functionality. First thing I'm going to do is set a little reference line here. Then I'm going to double click these two. Then I'm going to use the symmetry constraint. So double click the symmetry line, hold control, click the two entities, and then check symmetry. And we can throw an angle between them. So you see they're 20.3 degrees. I'm going to force this to 20. And then to fully constrain them, we just add a dimension from the one face to the origin. Now, if we want to see, if we look close here, you see that this one is right on, and then this one has been pulled off. So we can play with this number to split the difference. So you see here I've split the difference. Now, we also have a deviation tool right inside the sketch accuracy analyzer tab deviation and we can crank up the whiskers the multipliers here and, and what we're looking for is that we're kind of splitting the deviation between the two perfect so now um, we have another uh, uh, circular bore here that's all split up that's okay we'll go from the center we'll just click on the center drag beyond then if we drag again, you'll see when you get to one of these pink poly lines, you get a little white connected line. Now those are not uh, locked constraints. Um, so we'll just pull it until it touches and then we can see what dimension, um, you know, 11.527. Honestly, on this part, it's pretty rough. I'm gonna go 11.5. Then 
um, we need something just inside of where our solid currently is. So that's somewhere around here. Now here we can use the extend tool. We can extend in both directions. It just extends to the next entity. From there, we hit trim again, power trim, get rid of the areas that we're not interested in. Perfect. Now we hit exit. It's okay to just show our solid at this point. We hit extrude again. Um, we can go through all, or we could go blind and go way beyond all are fine. Now we don't have extruded, uh, uh, sorry, we, we, we could do a cut, but then we can't properly do a pattern. To do a pattern, we can't merge and we can't cut. We just need to make a new solid. So not checking either of these boxes makes a new solid. So I'm gonna do that. And in our solid bodies list here, we see we have two solids. Uh, and then the, also I am going to quickly make one of the holes. Uh, obviously, you would uh, look at the pattern, average deviations, uh, and all kinds of things like that, but you know we're not going to take the time to do that here. What I am going to do, though, is I'm going to make a construction line to the origin, right-click it, and force it to be vertical. See, we corrected the pattern just slightly. Escape. Do the exact same thing again. And extrude a new solid through all. All right. So now what we want to do is we want to create a pattern of those two solids and then subtract them from the, uh, the, the uh, uh, solid that we want to keep. So under the model tab, our, all of our features are in one tab here, then we can go up to the pattern. So the bodies we want to use to pattern are this one and this one. Rotation axis, I'm going to pick this circular edge and the number is, uh, is 10. Hit accept. So you see we have all of our bodies now. Our solid bodies list is quite extensive. Now we're going to use the Boolean commands to subtract all of these little cut bodies that we created um, from the target body. So the tool bodies, we can use this everything from the second one to the end of the list. And our target body is the outer. So we can either select in the uh, model manager or uh, graphically. And there we go.